How are you? I'm well. How's everybody doing this morning? Good. Good. Or afternoon, whatever it is. How, how would you say, or where do you feel like Marcus has made the biggest leaps in his comfort with what you guys have been doing or asking him to do? Yeah, I just think each week he gets a little bit more comfortable with the scheme, a little bit more comfortable with what we're asking him to do. You know, it's been a period of time where he didn't play football. So I think the more you do things, the, the better you get at them. And I think he's settling in a little bit this week or each week. I mean, uh, I think you can see in his confidence. And um, he's executing the plan and doing what we asked him to do. Was there a point where you really maybe got the sense that he had that more a better grasp of what he needed to do on a week-to-week -week basis? Or? No, you know, I just, I just see him getting more comfortable in the meeting room each day. You know, he goes out there. He puts in a lot of time. He puts in a lot of work. He's one of the first people here probably the last one to leave. And I just see the work that he puts in. And and he's worked on a lot of things, whether it's fundamentals, whether it's play calling, whatever it may be. And it's good to see that his work's starting to come to fruition. You've talked a bit about what you were talking about, <coughs> knocking off the rust, essentially, of not playing the last two years. What are some things that, I mean, when you talk about knocking off the rust, what are some things that you see him doing in that regard that maybe we don't see from the outside looking? Right. I, I think that the biggest thing is just the speed of the game and processing and seeing looks like, you know, as a backup quarterback, you know, you don't get a lot of those speed reps. You don't get a lot of those looks. And, you know, obviously he played some in the preseason. I think each game it's, it's probably slowing down a little bit for him. Um, he's got great command of the offense, great command of what we're asking him to do, and uh, he relates well to his teammates. So I can just see him getting more and more comfortable each week, and uh, I think it's showing in his play. You talk about him relating to his teammates. I think the storyline that kind of came out of – this past Sunday's game was just as much about him being a leader of the locker room. And I think I was talking to Caleb Huntley and Jalen Hawkins and two guys on different sides of the ball, but they both said the same thing. Like, yes, we we like following Marcus. We do follow Marcus. How do you see him being a leader, not only of this offensive unit, but the team in general? Right. I what I think Marcus does a great job of is getting to know his teammates. And like you said, he obviously he's in front of the offensive guys. He's around them a lot. But I see him, there may be a younger defensive player, and maybe he eats lunch with them, or maybe he finds a way to connect with them. And I think that's so important that he finds different little ways to connect to guys. It may be a guy who's his age, or maybe a rookie who's just 21, but he's really good at finding that little thing. Like, maybe this is something we have in common, or maybe this is something that I know, and he shares it with them. And I think guys appreciate it, because it's, it's very genuine. And I think guys appreciate that. And, and uh, I think that's everybody leads in their own way. I don't think there's any like cookie cutter way that you lead. And Marcus has a very genuine way about him how he leads. I think guys gravitate and follow him. How many, how many quarterbacks you've been around? Quarterbacks, whether it's college, NFL. How many quarterbacks really do that? I'm talking about defensive guys too and stuff like that. You know, I think the good ones have to. You know, I, I, you're the quarterback of the whole team, and you know, I, I think you've got to be able to relate to those guys and be able to. When times get tough, you got to be able to go in there and support each other. And I think if you don't have that connection or you don't have that thing in common, I think it's really hard to relate to guys. I think that's really anything in life. You got to kind of find that common denominator and something that maybe you guys share or maybe a piece of advice that Marcus can give from having played a few years to maybe this is my sleep pattern or this is how I take care of my body or this is how I prepare in the offseason. And it might just not apply to a quarterback. It may be to a young linebacker or you know, to a young DB. And just those little nuggets of information, I think, is how he does a great job of, of doing that with his teammates. Mobile and fast like him too, as well, just to have those options. Yeah, no, it, it's great. And, and Marcus brings energy and juice every day to the meeting room to practice. And uh, it's been great. And just to hear some of his experiences. And, you know, we may be looking at film and he goes, well, you know, I've seen this and maybe I've done it this way or maybe I've done it that way. And just to really see his personality come out. It's been fun. Uh, we got a fun, really fun quarterback room with him and Desmond. And it's really good. I enjoy working with those guys every day. I know Sunday, I know Sunday you didn't ask him to throw a whole lot. He only attempted 14 passes, but he was really efficient. When you go back and you look at Sunday, what stood out to you from the passing game particularly? Well, you know, one thing that we, we knew there was going to be a key to the game is we had to be efficient on offense. Uh, this is a really good defense we played on Sunday. We knew we had to take what they were going to give us, and I think Marcus did a great job of that. I think he was accurate. I think he was decisive. And he did what it, what it took for us to move the ball. We knew we had to stay on schedule. We knew we couldn't get in third and long situations with this group, with their rush patterns and their rush group. So I, I think as an offense and as a team, we executed the, executed the game plan you know, the way that we, we hoped it would go. And may have only thrown it 14 times, but the way we look at it is whatever it takes to win a ball game. If you got to throw it 14 times, run it 14 times, I think it's a week by week thing of whatever it takes to win the game. And I think our guys do a great job of that and understanding like, look, this week it may be running it 14 times. The next week we may have to throw it 40 times. It's like whatever it takes to win the ball game, and then you go on to the next week and you try to find the best way that you can to attack that defense to win the next game. How nice is it to have a quarterback that is balanced like that to make sure that 
that you can weave through the week in, week out of whoever you're facing? Yeah, no, it's good. I mean, he puts a lot of stress on, stress on defenses. Um, I know he's hard to defend. And it really makes guys think twice about, well, maybe do you want to blitz us here? Do you want to do this to us? Because he can get you out of jams. He can extend plays. Um, you know, he can throw on the run. So uh, I can imagine it's quite a challenge preparing for him each week. How have you managed Devlin? Because he's never really, he hasn't been in this situation in terms of being a backup. Right. I, I, I don't know, probably know the last thing. You might not even really know the last thing. How have you managed handling him in that way and some of those responsibilities that he has? Yeah, well, I think right now, uh, I look at it like this. I think he's a great caddy for Marcus right now. And he, he's in the meeting rooms. And the backup quarterback's got a really, really hard job because he's got to know the game plan as well as the starter does, but without – taking starter reps. He's taking scout team reps. And I think that's really, really hard to be able and study this however many plays are in the game plan. I've got to know it as good as Marcus does. I've got to know the protections. I've got to know the progressions. I've got to know our run checks, our run reads, whatever it may be. But I'm really not practicing. I'm practicing another team's look. So I think Desmond's done a great job of that, preparing each week. He spends as much time here as, as Marcus does. And then, you know, we try to do stuff with him, whether it's after practice or whatever, where he, we're trying to get some reps with him. But He's doing well. He's developing. And uh, I think he's doing a great job supporting Marcus as a backup quarterback and anything that Marcus needs him to do. A lot of times, you mentioned Caddy. A lot of times, when I've talked to backup quarterbacks, their job is as much getting the, quarter, getting the starter ready. And that's watching film or whatever. How is he adjusted to doing that? Like, what is his responsibility in, in all of that? Well, you know, his responsibility is, you know, obviously to prepare himself to play. But he does. He helps Marcus any way he can. And, whether it's on the sidelines during the game or in practice, maybe it's something that he sees that maybe Marcus didn't see. He can relay what he saw or, you know, he watches a lot of film as well. So it's just little things like that, to, like you said, to help their starter prepare each week and then to be ready to play when his number's called upon. Is Marcus the type of guy where he, he'll divvy up games? Because I know some quarterback groups have done that where it's like being prepped for a week. It's like, hey, back of quarterback, you take the, these five games and watch them. Like, is that how it goes in, this, in the room or is Marcus different? Well, you know, I – Marcus watches, he watches the majority of the games. I'll ask him if he's seen a look, and yeah, I've seen this look. So I don't think, you know, he and Desmond are probably watching the same film. Uh, I know Marcus wants to kind of see it all and, and, and consume it all and see the different looks. Um, but, you know, they, they do a good job of communicating each day and daily, whether it's in the meetings or after practice or, or during practice. Yeah, uh, uh, I'm just going to ask, you know, how, because we don't get to see practice, how Marcus has been doing, uh, you know, with the scout team, and how's the development been coming along? Desmond, you mean? Uh, yes, Desmond. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think he's doing well. Like I said, he's got to go in there. And fortunately, we've played some offenses are, that are kind of similar to ours. So a lot of times, his reps are the other team's reps, but they're similar plays. They're similar concepts. So he may go in there, look at the card, and say, all right, run it like we run this play. And that, that's his rep. And he understands that that's his rep. And it's the same or a similar type concept that we're going to run offensively. So I think he's done a good job with that. Um, obviously, doing a good job of getting guys in the right spots and, and dealing with motions and other things that come with, with being the scout team quarterback. And I think, she, I think he does a great job after practice of grabbing the younger guys, guys who maybe not have receivers or running backs who maybe not have gotten as many reps. And then we'll go through the plays there. So that's, once again, his time mentally to go through the reps and the plays. And he does a good job of, of carrying those other guys with him. Any mention of, you know, he's going back to Cincinnati, you know, back up. That's, he's kind of the man up there. You know, Oscar Robinson, Desmond Ritter. Wow. <laughs> That's strong company right there. Wow. <laughs> but, yeah, he's big up there. So, but, I mean, it's got to be, you know, he probably wants to play. But, uh, you know, they got to stay in the road, keep your mindset together. How's he doing, you know, with that part of it? Yeah, no, he's, he's fine. Desmond professionally understands this is a business trip, and I haven't asked him about it. But uh, he'll handle it like, like a professional. I know he will, so. beneficial is it to have someone who has as calm of a demeanor as Marcus at all times? You know, I, I think it's good because a lot of times when, when things don't go the right way or it gets rocky in a game, guys are going to look at the quarterback to see how they react. And Marcus does have a calming presence about him. You know, he doesn't ride the roller coaster of emotions. He's pretty steady. And I think that's important to have from the quarterback position that guys know, hey, look, like this guy's not rattled, so I shouldn't be rattled either. So um, I think he's got a good calming influence and uh, he's, got, he's got a really good demeanor. So I think it fits, it fits well. <laughs> room with you. Um, what is Marcus like in those situations? Is, is he more of a leader? Is, is he really vocal? In the quarterback room in our yeah. meetings? Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, uh, I think he's done a really good job of saying, I'm comfortable with this. 
I like this. This is what I've seen. Hey, I've been, you know, maybe in this place. This is how we picked up this blitz, or this is a play that I like. And I think it's great to have that communication between myself and, and Coach Ragone and, and Coach Smith. And, um, you know, I, I think he does a great job of just expressing himself and being open, and it's a lot of open dialogue. So I think it's really good. Coach, when you all were scouting the quarterbacks, uh, what was your um, what could you share about Bailey Zapp? He's one of the rookie quarterbacks that's playing. Yeah. Uh, Pick is playing, uh, and you all got a, you know another you know respectful developmental approach here. Uh, what did you have on Bailey Zapp? You know, really, I just know the guy had a lot of production from from where you know from wherever he was. It was a ton of it was a ton of production. Like I don't know a lot about him, but it was a ton of production, and uh, he is playing well, so I'm, I'm happy for him. Going back. Go talking about how Marcus adds to this offense and what he's able to do with his legs and being able to move the pocket and all that kind of stuff. How much does overall supplement the supplementation of the run itself help Marcus and what he's doing, whether it's with Tyler Algier or Caleb Huntley and the production that they're obviously having? How does that help him open things up? I mean, Marcus's ability to run, is that kind of what you're asking? Yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, it's another guy that the defense has to defend. You know, you can't – a lot of quarterbacks, you don't have to defend, them, defend their legs. But Marcus is one you have to. You've got to always account for him. And, and like I said, he can extend a play. He can keep it alive. He can add to our run game. He had whatever, 50 yards rushing, whatever it was on Sunday. And those are hidden yards that are, that are important to the team. And, you know, I, I think one of the key plays of the game is when he had the scramble for the first down. And stuff like that that's always extending a play. Or maybe he scrambled and it got us in third and two or third and three. It kept us in a manageable situation. We always talk about don't make a bad play worse. So if you can get us to third and two instead of being in third and 12, like th those are huge hidden yards in there. And I think – Part of his mobility is part of the reasons why we've been able to do that. We haven't talked to you, so we haven't talked to you since uh, really you, Marcus having those ball handling issues for the first four yeah. five weeks of the year. What do you attribute that to? You know, I, once again, I, I think it's about being comfortable. And you know, obviously, we work on it every day. We work quarterback center change. We work ball handling with the backs. Uh, we work ball security drills. And obviously, we got to do a better job of taking care of the ball because you know when you're carry the ball, you carry the hopes and dreams of the football team with you when you have that ball in your hand. So. Um, you know, it's just stuff that we just got to continue to work. We've got to continue to be conscious about it. I mean, teams are going to try to attack the ball. That's, you know, creating turnovers is it's a big thing that these defenses preach. So it's just something that we stay on top of. And I know it's in his mind, and I know we're, we're, we're focusing on it. And as a team, I, you know, we're really focusing on ball security and making sure we don't turn the ball over. Because obviously that's one of the biggest factors in whether you win a game or not is your, your, your turnover margin. So it's something that we're focusing on, we're continuing to work on, and, and continue to press forward with that. With, within that, I mean, the, you're talking a little bit about the quarterbacks. Uh, quarterback handoffs during the last few years and making decisions. Is that maybe where some of the issues were early on because he doesn't have, he didn't have familiarity with you, Tyler, or even with Caleb, even though he hasn't really done that much with Caleb. Is, can that be part of it too, where those two guys don't understand each other all that much? I, I don't know if it's they don't understand each other. Obviously a couple, you know, a couple of them didn't happen on any type of RPOs or, or, or whatever it may be. And obviously some of it's misfortune and, you know, the ball may slip here or it may get caught on somebody's hip. It just, it's just stuff that we got to continue to work. And we work it every day and we'll continue to work it. And I know the guys want to do better and they will do better. Looking at this offense as a whole, um, for you when you're watching Marcus operate, how much does the overall success of what the, this offensive line is doing over the course of the first six games do for Marcus's success? Yeah, no, they, they've been tremendous. And, you know, Coach Ledford does a great job with, uh, with his staff there. They do a great job, and they've done a great job. We've obviously run the ball and protecting Marcus, and, you know, I think they're understanding kind of his style of play, and he understands how, how they're blocking things. So I think as we continue to play games, they're obviously continue to get comfortable with each other. But I think the line's doing an outstanding job and, you know, rushing the ball well, we're protecting well, and, you know, Marcus did. He, he won the award, but I think he'd be the first to tell you that he couldn't do it with those guys out, up, up front. And uh, they, they've been obviously key contributors to what we've been able to do the last few weeks. Uh, Coach, is this style of offense sustainable? You know, people got it on tape now. Um, you know, heavy run, um, pass. I'm sure y'all want to improve the passing uh, production. Um, but how sustainable is this offense moving forward? I, I think, like I said before, whatever it takes to win. Like, how, whatever mode that we have to do to win a football game, we're going to do it. If that means we throw it 20 times this week, great. If it means we throw it 40 times this week, great. I think – this offense is more than sustainable because I think we're going to take what the defense gives us. You know, we're going to find whatever niche we think can help us win the football game, and that's what we're going to try to do. And whatever that may be is our guys have accepted. Our guys, our guys believe in the system. They believe in what we're trying to do. And they accept each challenge that we have this week about whatever the keys are to try to win the game. So I, I guess to answer your question, yes, I do think it's sustainable. <laughs>
Just football. I've been playing football my whole life. So uh, going out there, playing within the confines of the defense, doing my job, the one, uh, one of 11, and going out there just uh, trying to help us uh, win a game. Mm -hmm. uh, what's your assessment of the uh, Bengals? Coach kept telling us they like to do 11 personnel a lot, and uh, those guys had a lot of catches last week against the Saints. Yeah, they have a good receiving core. We have a good DB core. We're both young, uh, relatively young. So going out there, playing it within the scheme of the defense for this week, and uh, going out there trying to get a win. In the turnovers you all been able to get, uh, is that something you all you don't want to try to build on? You yeah, know? we harp on turnovers every mm -hmm. week, um, trying to get our offense the ball, more possessions to go out there and score. Um, turnover margin is a big uh, deciding factor for wins for the most part. So mm -hmm. going out there trying to get our offense the ball as many times as we can and uh, help us win. And what's your assessment of Joe Barrow and how he's playing, uh, you know, you know, after the slow start, I guess they had. He's a good quarterback. Um, he showed that last year, taking him to the Super Bowl. Um, he's still a good quarterback. So we're going out there, doing what we have to do to uh, affect him in the in the passing game, and then uh, try to get a win, try to get a win. No Is sunglasses today? Huh? No sunglasses Listen, today. I ain't bringing them to practice now. <laughs> Not to practice. So game day thing? Game correct. day thing. Game day fit. Where, what's it fit. like when you, I mean, you know, you can say all you want about their super court, but this is one of the few receiver in the league where you have three guys who theoretically could be a number one. Mm -hmm. How do you prep for that? Uh, prep for them the same. Baby court? No, the same way we prep for anybody else. Um, we respect everybody in this league. I guess uh, every week you have a challenge every single week. So going out there, they have three good receivers, but we, we are confident in ourselves, the, the game plan that uh, Coach Bees will have for us. So go out there and uh, just play. Go out there and play. How much, those, how much of those like random reps that you would get? You know, you would get like a series here, a series yeah. here. Yeah. How much is, do you think that might help you versus if you had to just kind of going forward? Even last um, like I said uh, last or after the game, we all practice like starters. So going out there, it's helpful. However, um, you go out, going out there and just playing football. I've been playing football my whole life, especially the, uh, defensive back. Like I have played that literally my whole life. So going out there, it's, it's, it feels natural. So nothing too big. Darren, how would you describe the culture around here right now? It's um, it's different. It's different from last year for sure. Um, we, we have we're very confident in ourselves right now. Um, we're feeling good. We just got to keep the ball rolling right now. Keep the ball rolling. I know that one of the things that coach always preaches on is like you don't want to get too high when you win, not too low when you lose. Yeah. How do you guys approach that as players? On the same way, um, we take on the same personality as our head coach, our DC. Um, we feel what they feel. They feel what we feel. So when he says that, we all feel that. Um, it's a, it's, a lot of teams are up and down in this league, but we don't want to be one of those teams. So going out there, um, playing hard, playing physical, playing fast, that's what we like to do. So. Burrow is confident in himself and kind of brash. Do you like playing against a guy like that? Yeah, I, I mean, I'm a very confident person right. myself. So uh, I like that he exudes his confidence uh, on the field and interview and stuff like that. Um, it's a hard league, especially playing quarterback. So you have to be confident in yourself. And then playing defensive back, you're playing backwards the whole time. You don't know what the offense is doing. So you got to be a different type of person to play uh, defensive back. So that's good. How does that manifest itself with you on the field? Um, I just play with confidence. Every play, um, I don't really, like, like uh, she was just saying, I don't really get too high or too low. I'm level headed on every single play. Um, just be ready for the play that comes your way. How do you do your progression from the start of the season to now heading into week time? Um, it's been good. I was ha dealing with a couple of little nagging injuries. However, um, getting back to myself, getting back to co the, conf the confidence in myself and uh, playing well. Um, every week you try to get better. Every day you try to get better at practice. So um, just getting, uh, getting more reps in the defense and everything like that is helping me uh, be more comfortable out there at corner again.